Please welcome back director Stephanie Sochi. Producer Michelle Walrath. Uh, my producers Eve Marzen and Sarah Olson. Our associate producer and assistant editor Carly Palmer. Who didn't know she was and the producer Brian Lazarte, our editor. Um, we're ready for questions. Yes? Do you think this film will ever be shown on TV due to the conflict of interest with in advertisers? The question is, is, do we think the film will ever be shown on television due to the conflict of advertisers? I do. I don't think it'll be shown on an ABC, CBS, you know, NBC situation, but I think there's a cable run in it for us. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, you're all skinny. I wonder what your, your, your T-O-T-I is, and that's a new word for me. <coughs> My serious question is, though, you have President Clinton a number of times speaking. Now, we know what happened to him, and we know he changed his diet, and we can see that, but, you've ne but why did you not let him tell about his transition and how hard or not hard it was? So the question is, is why didn't we tell a little bit more about President Clinton's transition um, and his diet changes, to which end I will let our editor tell you. Uh, with a film like this, there are so many choices that you have to make, and he had so many great things to say, and so we wrestled with, you know, what was the most important. Obviously, a lot of people know the personal story. A lot of people know that he changed his diet and he got healthier, so we felt like his perspective of you know what took place while he was in office and his uh, opinion about sugar was more valuable. So that's why we chose not to include it. Uh, to the yes, yes. Uh, you did not address the sugar and alcohol. Could you talk about that? And did you think about uh, talking about it in the film? We didn't address sugar and alcohol, to which I'll address it to my favorite drinker. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay. Just socially people, that's not a problem. <laughs> so, um, you're right, there is sugar and alcohol, certainly there's sugar in all alcohol. Um, I think we felt like there are so many other products that are, are uh, more commonly ingested that were more important to talk about. And again, it kind of speaks to what Brian said, is there's just so much information that we had to deal with that really selecting what was the most important for the broadest population kind of dictated that. So, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I would just also add that I think one of the things we tried to think about was um, looking at products that people think are healthy so that a lot of people, when they're drinking fruit juice, think that they're doing something good for themselves. And it was important to point out that the sugar content there is really high as well. Whereas with alcohol, most people kind of know you're having a treat. So. You want to go to the back of the room? I saw somebody in the back. Last chance? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't often see films that uh, make me change my behavior. I promise. From now on, I'm going to read labels, which I've never done before. Uh, I noticed that uh, they didn't say anything about uh, wheat products, but I, I hear a lot of buzz now from my kids that all, of, all of wheat products are really destroying our system. Uh, is that true? or? Uh, the question is, is what about wheat products? Are they killing us as well? Um, 
You know, there's a great book out called Wheat Belly that I would advise reading for more. Um, I think you have to read labels. You know, I think you really have to look at. And when it comes to wheat, I think we took our first tip was if the first ingredient is whole wheat, then it actually has whole wheat in it. Um, I know that there are some issues with wheat. I wouldn't say I'm as much of an ex a wheat expert as I am a sugar expert. Um, but I think a good resource for that is the, the wheat belly, which I did read initially, and now I'm just, just blanking. But um, there are some problems, but it's not as bad as sugar. Uh, yes, to the, the nice young lady right there. What's the next step for you guys in getting this out and using it as an educational foundation to teach more, like a wider audience than those of us at Sundance? The question is, is what's the next step? For us in, in reaching a wider audience. Um, how much do I tell about this? <laughs> have you made a deal? <laughs> we may or may not have a deal. <laughs> it's a good one. Feel free to leak it. <laughs> um, the, but the big plan, the really significant plan, I think, for us is to make sure that this school is seen at this school. This film is seen in every school yeah. across the country. And with that, I'm actually counting on you because we need our foot soldiers to make sure that you're bringing it and that you demand that your school show it. So if you go to our website and sign up for our newsletters, we're going to give you tips on how to do that. So, you know, this really is going to be a people's movement. So I hope that when you leave here, you tell 10 people about it and you go visit fedupthemovie.com. And, you know, this is really just the beginning. Yes, sir. Any study that compares kids who go to school versus kids who are homeschooled and their obesity rates? Um, I don't. I don't remember Did you seeing that. The question. Oh, um, I'm so sorry. Is that? Go ahead. Sorry. The question was whether there are any studies that show the difference between kids who go to school and kids who are homeschooled, which is a good. Sorry, with their obesity rates. Um, it's a good question. I don't know the answer to it offhand, but um, I would think you know school is one of several factors. So. I don't know if just not being in school would make all the difference, but it is one out of the three meals we did today. So it would also depend, I guess, how the parents are feeding you at home. <laughs> um, I would just add to that, I, I don't know the homeschooling studies, but we are seeing a lot about the family dinner table, and um, that's something that starts with the quote about as local as your fork. Family dinner table could be three meals a day, or it could be broken down in a few meals. It could be the school lunch, but that's something that we all can play a part in is introducing that into your own family or your neighbor or um, we have kids and we have friends come over. It's kind of a new concept and everyone sits together for their meal. But I think that's where we are seeing studies that show that that makes a big difference in um, child, children obes childhood obesity. Um, to the, yes, yes. I think the film was fabulous and I would say two things. One is when this goes to the schools, reading labels is not nearly as important, I think, as teaching people how to read labels, because mm -hmm. the manufacturers are very clever at um, distracting you and know, reading the materials. But my question goes to the point of salt, and wondering if after sugar you might go after salt. <laughs> In the next one, is there anyone to uh, he, he asked if, if after sugar we're going to go after salt. And uh, there is more to the question, but just to keep it simple. Um, the, the studies that combine salt and fat with sugar is what makes it so hyper palatable. And I think that that's really the most important thing. I mean, w th there's a lot of things that we know about what's bad for us. I think what we were trying to do with the film is present the one thing that we don't realize is so bad for us. I mean, we, we have national holidays that are based on sugar, you know, Valentine's Day, Halloween, and it's all based on this idea that it's good for our kids. And so I think it's really just important to remember that sugar is, you know, the major thing that should surprise you, and that's the one thing that does not have a percentage next to its label when you look at anything in the supermarket. So when, when, you, when you do the math, the four grams equals one teaspoon of sugar, if you think about it, you know, 24 grams of sugar is, you know, the 100% of the amount of sugar that you should consume in a day. So when you look at 
products like cranberry juice, which have like 53% sugar, it's 200 times the amount of sugar you should have in a day. So just think about that the next time you're at the grocery store, read the labels, and uh, yes, salt is, you know, has its issues, but it's also when it's combined with sugar that makes it so bad. We neglected an area. Maybe the back. The, the back? Yeah. As you guys do so beautifully with the tobacco analogy, are you aware of any lawsuits taking on the junk food industry and the sugar producers? Uh, the, the question is, is have there been any lawsuits taking on the, the food industry? You know, around the time that Super Size Me came out, there were, there were talks of lawsuits. There's nothing in the works now, but I can tell you um, that I know that some things may be happening in the near future. Um, but why don't you leave the charge? <laughs> <laughs> I'll work with you. All right, I like it. Um, in, uh, yes, in the back. Well, as you saw there, sugar falls under. So he's asking about um, how a lot of products will say uh, low sugar and they'll have something like sugar alcohol listed. Um, and I think as we mentioned, you know, sugar has a lot of different names out there. And um, it can be very confusing to navigate. So uh, most importantly, you know, one of my biggest takeaways as we were making this film that really surprised me was that sugar substitutes and things like um, cane sugar and uh, even going to honey and agave and those types of things, those are still, your, your body recognizes those as sugar and it produces the same effect. So agave? that's agave. A, a, creative, a creative way to um, kind of mask the real effect. Yes. Um, I noticed earlier in the, uh, the video you was talking about fiber and how it Um, it does. Uh, I think the so when you're eating fruit or something natural that has fiber in it naturally, that's great, and it, it does. You know, nature has its way of giving it to us in the proper proportions. Um, but the danger then you still want to be careful with those fiber bars or things like that, um, or things that that have added fiber because um, they're actually only able to add uh, parts of the fiber, not not the whole fiber that that is what your body really needs. So it's again, it's one of those marketing claims where they'll say, you know, 25% of your daily fiber or whatever, so, it, and then if it has a ton of sugar, you might think it's okay, but it, it's not. So basically, natural fiber is okay. I think we have time for just two more questions. Thank you right here. Um, yeah, I wondered if you kind of had the foregone conclusion before you started what surprised you on, on a personal level along the way as you started uncovering these things and pulling these things together? Um, or did it kind of create its own? I mean, because it's a pretty fatal, terrifying concept. And I wondered if you knew that going into it or? Thanks, I think that's a fun question for me. The question is, is did we have a, a foregone conclusion when we started this? Uh, and we didn't. When Katie called Sarah and I and said she wanted to do a film about childhood obesity, we were like, Hmm. don't we kind of know everything about childhood obesity? Um, so we actually had no idea. And we were big foodies and fans of Food Inc. and Super Size Me, and we've been vegetarians since we were teenagers, so we thought we knew it all. And then as you know, we started to dig, all these you know, things started coming up. This, and it unfolded like a murder mystery, you know, with these little clues along the way of what happened. I think the thing that was most surprising for me was that I thought I was eating so healthy, um, especially being a vegetarian, we're sort of elitist, right? Because we're not eating meat. Um, but I was eating so much more processed food than, than it occurred to me because of all the meat substitutes and all the things that you turn to. So, and also I was doing the low fat thing. I was always, you know, Weight Watchers and doing the low fat cream cheese, not paying attention to the fact that it had 30 ingredients. So, yeah, I was, you know, and that was really exciting. Any, did anything surprise either of you want to share? 
No, they weren't surprised. <laughs> um, no, you know, one of mine was the biggest, the diet foods, really. I mean, it, it really shocked me, um, the, what we learned about that. And I think that, um, you know, I think that that's something that most people don't know. Um, and in the course of making this project, both Stephanie and I had babies, um, our first babies. So, you know, to begin to think about um, food in a different way, now we're not only thinking about our own health, but the health of our children. Mine is nine months and Stephanie's is seven and a half. And, um, you know, it really changes going forward. I, uh, my daughter right now is drinking formula. And it terrifies me, you know, to think about, well, what are, what are my options outside of the formula I'm giving her? Is it the best formula? You know, all of these things that I'm already starting to, like, spin in my mind. And um, I think that, that that made a huge impact on me and will make a huge impact on her eating going forward. And I hope she'll have a better start than, than I did or than any of us did. Real quick, let's have, find out what surprised Carly. Because Carly didn't get to talk. Um, I think it was the same as Stephanie with like the low fat claims. I gained weight in college, surprise, surprise, and when I graduated I was like figuring out how I was going to lose it and I would do Weight Watchers, Slim Fast, things like that. And I lost it to a degree but I was still getting sick and I was still, there's like a certain point where you don't lose anymore for people, even if you're exercising. And so that's kind of when A, I started working here and B, learning more about it and realizing that a lot of it was too much sugar. But, I think time for just one, one more question. More. You want to call it, Michelle? Okay. Oh, okay. You prepare this for distribution for the schools. Will you provide a discussion, guided discussion that addresses the things that you addressed in the film, like the addiction quality of sugar and, and those different things? Yeah, definitely. There is. Um, it's in the works right now. How to how to make? Oh, the question was when we bring it to the schools. Um, it will provide um, curriculum and workbooks and layers to how you become healthy. The home ec isn't in the schools anymore. <coughs> how, you, how you make this a real living um, movie for people. So yes, the answer is yes. We have some experience with that from our first film we did, which was tapped, and that went into a lot of schools. And um, the plan is to get um, a, a huge movement together for these schools and to bring it to many levels and many layers. and. Um, take, it to, take it to all the different ages, so yes. Great, thank you so much all for coming.